This was God's plan from the beginning. Break the chains of sin. Set us free so we could be restored to Him, alive in Christ forevermore. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the ghost of sin. to the sound of redemption song, sung by people redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Though crowned with thorns by his accusers, we sing of a Redeemer 
who wears the crown of victory with all dominion, power, and glory his. He is crowned the Lord of life, our eternal matchless king.
Just as we know that Jesus suffered and died on a cross to secure our salvation, we rejoice in the knowledge that following his death, he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so that we might walk in newness of life. Today we live our lives in a spirit of gratitude and praise for the truth and power of his resurrection. But let us never forget his suffering. While we are bathed in the light of his glorious resurrection, we also stand in the shadow of his cross. We know that it was for sins we had done that he groaned upon that tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Before Christ was nailed to the cross, he endured unimaginable suffering, cruelty, and pain. He bore stripes from the savage beating delivered by Roman soldiers scourging his back. 
They used torturous, multi-stranded whips laced with bits of bone and metal meant to cut and shred the skin on our Savior's back. He bled for us. They placed a purple robe on his shoulders, a cruel crown of thorns on his head, mocking him with words of scorn and derision. He was humiliated for us. They struck him. They spat upon him, degrading him. Then they nailed him to a cross, drove a spear into his side as he willingly gave his life for our many sins. Let us all declare, along with the Apostle Paul, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Were it not for the cross, there would be no resurrection, no salvation, and no promise of eternal life. It is the power of the cross that frees us from our sins. His victory is our victory. Lord, we thank you for the cross.
for the blood. Every debt was paid with that crimson stain. Jesus, precious Holy One, God who came to save, conquering the grave. We pray for praises, we lift you high, as we remember your sacrifice. Jesus, all we are, we bring, Savior, Lord, and King, thank you for the What kind of man was Christ? This question loomed large over him during his life on earth. The things he did, things he said. Once after, he had spoken to the crowds during the Feast of Tabernacles. People came away saying, Never did a man speak like this man. Could he really be the Son of God, Messiah, the King of Kings? What kind of king would be born in a stable? born in a cattle stall, yet whose birth was proclaimed by a heavenly host. What kind of king would submit to being crucified like a criminal, hanging on a cross in shame? What kind of man? The same kind of man who was crucified while the criminal Barabbas went free, who offered grace and forgiveness even as someone like Thomas doubted him until he could touch the scars in his hands and his side, whose shed blood bought salvation for someone like Peter, even though Peter three times denied knowing Christ. The same kind of man who willingly, lovingly gave his life on Calvary's cross for someone like me. I am Barabbas, a rebel, a prisoner. Death was the sentence for me. Led before Pilate, I stood there beside him. This man some were calling a king. And as the crowd shouted, crucify him, the soldiers let me go free. What kind of man, guilty of nothing, 
Following the death of Jesus, they took his body down from the cross, wrapped his body in linen, and laid him in a borrowed tomb. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee took the spices they had prepared and went to his tomb. There they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. They watched as the soldiers lowered the cross, pulling the nails from his hands and his feet. They wept while the crown was ripped from his brow, and his lifeless body collapsed in defeat. Then they followed as Jesus was placed in the tomb, and the stone was rolled into place. Their hopes and their dreams, their Savior, their King, was not sealed in a cold, dark grave. For three days they mourned and questioned it all. 
God has raised Jesus from the dead and made him both Lord and Christ. May we ever rejoice in the power of his cross and live in the light of his glorious resurrection.